Hey, it's Terry Bain coming at you with another fun and exciting episode of Business Growth Time. We've got Juliet Herman. She's going to talk about the three E's in why we think we're actually married. We're not really sure. But before we get into any of that, I am going to introduce you to my good friend, longtime pal, not high school sweetheart, marketing diva, Janet E. Johnson, where today the E stands for the four E's, right? I've got one E. She's got three E's. Now, Janet, you get to have four E's. Five if you count the one you ever had. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Janet? I don't have. I, sounds good. I don't know. I have no response. <laughs> Janet, are you exasperated right now? Oh, I like that hey, one. Oh, she's got a good word. There you go. it, most any time we actually do this, I think Janet becomes exasperated <laughs> at one point or another. Or is it exacerbated? I think it's the latter. Hey, um all these E's. So we're going to talk E's, right? We're going to talk social. We're going to talk business growth. But Juliet and I met on LinkedIn through Service Professionals Network, which is an amazing group. If you're not spending time with those people, do it now. SPN Service Professionals Network. You can find their group or you can find them at serviceprofessionalsnetwork.com. It's like an unpaid endorsement right there. Another E word. But hi, Julia, you had care, uh, communication whisperer in your profile. And I remember sending you a note the moment I said, saw that. I was like, I got to learn more about you and that. And you've been putting out great content. So welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so should I tell you about the threes? You can start there. You can start with you. Or you can drip yeah, one E a at a time. Your, uh, background. What okay. So um, I am from New York City, and that's where I am now. But the one thing I believe is that everyone needs to just live all over the world, even if it's one other place, because it really, ex here's another E, it expands your horizons. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I was 17, I traveled, traveling's different. You got to live someone and really like just um, and thrust yourself into that environment. And so I've lived in England, I've lived in France, and I've lived in five different states. And that was as an adult that had nothing to do with family. That was because I decided that I really wanted to get to know the real world, if you will. And having grown up in New York City, um, there was a really old fashioned cartoon in the New Yorker, which had a map of the world. And it was literally uh, of the states, excuse me. It was New York City was this big and the rest of the states were tiny. And that is the insular way that people in New York feel. And I can say that because I'm a New Yorker. So. Mm -hmm. Always insult your own kind. Don't ever go outside of those boundaries. <laughs> um, and so I wanted to live all over the States even. And because I knew that New York was not the real United States. Um, and so I went to school in St. Louis, Missouri. And I got to tell you, wow, is that different than, than New York's? <laughs> got to be culture shock. It was a huge culture shock. So, um, and living, I lived in London for a very long time. And mm -hmm. I decided as an adult, I've spent very little time in New York. And it's different when you live here growing up. And so I came back. Um, I've been back over 10 years now, but still it feels like yesterday. Um, because, you know, London is definitely my second home in my heart. Hmm. So uh, it's, it's, it's a great experience. Very, very cool. So would it name some of the four other, well, three other states. We got Missouri and New York. What were the other three? Okay, so Pennsylvania, um, mm -hmm. New Jersey, although that's kind of the same, isn't it? <laughs> maybe yeah, I don't... And Maryland so maybe the only other place I've lived Maryland. outside of the east coast is, is, is Missouri so uh okay yeah yeah I did the same at one point I, I actually lived in Buffalo New York oh For 30 days I was out of there I couldn't handle it no nope. not my style at all um but people were just weren't nice over there but then I went to the other side of the world Portland Oregon Wow. Oh, so oh. laid back there. Oh. So I ended up back in the middle. <laughs> I had no I idea. I had no idea really? that you lived in either Buffalo or Portland. That's fascinating. It you was, learn something new every day. And Absolutely. you learn the difference that, uh, yeah, I mean, it made me realize that the Midwest is very, yeah. we're just the, kind of the, you know, we're the Bible Belt too, but we're more yeah. conservative. And But then the East Coast, Sorry, but they just Buffalo, especially people were not very nice. I mean, it just and then in West Coast, they were too laid back and smoking and you know, hang, you know, just way too laid back. So it was interesting. <laughs> I mean, I liked Portland, uh, beautiful, beautiful area. Um, but yeah, lots of um, 
tree huggers there. There's nothing like Minnesota nice, though. I mean, it's the Minnesota like, nice it, is what I it's a thing, right? Yeah. That's a legitimate thing. Um, I've never been to Portland. I think I would fit into Portland quite well. Thank you very you know, much. Can I it's make fun. a confession? I've only ever been to Mi Minnesota. I used to go there for business trips years ago. I worked for Kraft. Oh, and yeah. my brand was cream of wheat and our plant was in Minnesota and we would go in the winter and I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not a winter bunny. I admit it is really cold outside, but the snow was exorbitant. I mean, we were excited being inside. I mean, granted, when you're around, when you're around a hot cereal, it makes you feel warm anyway. Sure. But, um, still, it was, we walked outside the door and within a second I was frozen. So I give you a lot of credit for living there, but you do have the mall of America. You have a whole yeah. little world. It's a tough world in the wintertime. We just hibernate. <laughs> <laughs> You're bears. <laughs> yep. you, now you learn how to enjoy and embrace the cold, right? Otherwise, you have to leave. There's no... We, we've had the, the no upper 30s ways. lately, and it hasn't been too bad. So um, I, so far, so good, but we're going to be in for it, I think. We'll, we'll get payback. But Terry's guy kind of got a similar... Uh, you know, climate, it just starts a teeny bit worse. It's not even, it's not even <laughs> close, right? That's I don't, too bad the last couple of years, I'll be honest. Yeah. I don't wear a coat in winter in, are you kidding? in Detroit because it doesn't get cold here. Yes, and people are does. like, but it's eight degrees. And you're, I'm like, yeah, like I said, it doesn't get cold here. If you've been somewhere where it's 40 below or 60 yeah, below, that's, true. that's, that's true. a whole, like, that's, that's awesome. It's just awful. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to go mountain climbing and I did survival training and yeah. um, I remember I, I mean wow. I have pictures if you ever watch my video well you could pop, well you could see them in the distance but I've literally slept on you know right next to glaciers and and it, I don't care wow. what anyone tells you it is cold it's it cold. is really cold and so I did survival training where we didn't have tents and all we had to build igloos it was really fun um oh, so cool so all that we had was a tarp so you put a tarp above the igloo i still to this day don't understand the purpose of the tarp if you're going to build an igloo but that's that's for an expert in that arena but <laughs> and so we were in it you know so you would you would pair off like two of us in an igloo and you would keep peanut butter next to you and every couple of hours you would scoop some peanut butter because it was it was zero to sub-zero and you wow. just don't you, you don't you're cold i mean you're sleeping literally in a sleeping bag with a tarp, you know, with a piece of plastic underneath you in the snow and the cold. And it is really, it was great, great training though. I, I loved it. So I have lived in the cold from that perspective. For That's worse than what I, I go from my house to the heated car yeah. in the garage, heated yeah. garage. And then I, I mean, so it's not. Uh, so that's my world. Yeah. yeah. In the wintertime, you know, we're, we just have to do that. Awesome. So, well, let's talk about those three E's. Okay. What are these three E's that you're talking about? Well, Terry just brought one up because he said embrace. Um, ah. You just have to embrace the cold. So slightly, it, it's really the same concept. So the first E is um, embrace. It's really doing a deep dive, um, an excavation, if you will, and figuring out where you are at the moment. Um, and just to understand what are your strengths? What are, well, from a company's perspective, what are the company's strengths? What are the company's weaknesses? Because you, you have both. What, have, what has already been done if it's not a new company, if it's a new company, what hasn't been done in the market yet? And how can you fill that gap? Because that's the goal, you always wanna fill that gap. And then when you figure, you have all of that investigative information behind you, the key findings, you then move on to engage, which is what I call taking inspired action. That, that's really what it is. Because if you have a plan and a strategy um, and it's not inspired. It needs to be inspired by research. It needs to be inspired by your gut instincts, um, inspired by any competition on the marketplace. Um, and, and then you figure out what those steps are. You then know when you put together Embrace, now you've taken the action, you then move into Evolve. And essentially evolving is where you've learned all those lessons, you're now achieving your goal. So the end result is always to get to that goal, but you never rest on your laurels. Because I've seen so many companies, including Coke, I saw, I've seen Coke lose a lot of money and a lot of revenue and a lot of market share because they relied on the fact that they were number one. Well, you still may be number one, but you're much smaller number one. Mm -hmm. So it's really like a lather, rinse, repeat, if you will. You just want to keep doing the cycle, never stay in that place where you're just so excited that you've achieved it. Because if you've achieved it, what are you about to do to achieve the next step? 
So don't like be that. complacent, basically. Exactly. Exactly. And and by the way, that the smartest business people do become complacent. I think. I think go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, I think we all like to do one of these too often. And it's good to do that, but take your arm off. <laughs> it's just, you know, you've done great. Take the uh, congratulations, but keep moving. Yeah, if your victory lap lasts more than like an hour and a half, you're yeah. doing it wrong, right? Well, that could be another ego. E, by the way, that would be ego. Ego, <laughs> right. So should we <laughs> embrace and involve our ego or just engage our ego? Help me understand. Well, I think we all have ego because ego is pride. That's all it is. So even ego doesn't necessarily mean you're a narcissist. So we all have a sense of pride. So it's okay to fill that bucket a little bit, but that's what I mean, a little bit. So maybe at the end say, great, I did this, and then get out of the way. Getting out of your own way means get away from your ego and, and, and embrace your team. It's interesting because, you know, you can go through the routine that you've been doing for a while and get so adapt to it. And if you're not actually measuring the impact that it's had, years can go by when you've been doing the same shit. And all of a sudden you're like, well, how come I'm not getting the results I was looking for? Sure. So how do you stay fresh and how do you stay focused on adapting? And more importantly, let me use your word, evolving. How do you, how do you stay in that? mindset no that's a great question because i think what people do is is number one they like to take credit so they're stuck in their ego mm -hmm. um so if you get out of your ego you realize well, even if you are supposedly independent in my mind no one is i mean even if you work alone a good entrepreneur knows that there's always a virtual team there are always people because you can't in fact if you do everything alone then you know are you really eventually going to sustain those customers because you really need to surround yourself with smart people, with accomplished people, with people that are ambitious. Um, so the goal is, again, to look at the metrics. Because if I'm looking at metrics from two months ago, I mean, Janet, you're an expert in social media. When, when you look at metrics from two months ago, in social media terms, that's pretty antiquated. So you're continuing to evaluate. So there's another one. So it's continuing to, you know, there's another E. It's just once you get to evolve, then evaluate and then go back to embrace. Because what you're evaluating is what is my new standing in the market? What are my customer demands? So really the other thing is you want to continue to communicate with your customer base. And customers, there can be met, depending on the product or service, there are many different forms of customers. And no matter what anyone says, we all have customers and we all have competition. Because those are the other things I hear from business people. Oh, I don't have any competition. You do. I mean, we all have limited attention spans. We all have limited disposable income. So no matter how wealthy you are, no matter, no matter how much time you have, we all have limitations. So you want to keep evaluating so that you are answering to your customer demands. And then when they completely walk away, figure out who are my new customers. Hmm. That makes sense. So going backwards, so this would um, evolve... Where would like testing come into this? Oh, okay. Because so, testing is a big part of what I talk about that you've constantly got to retest, retest, retest. Because like you said, things change so fast, then you have to test new things. Like kind of like I was talking about how I'm going to be doing LinkedIn videos every day in the month of January because I want to test it. Right. It's all about testing. And, and that's exactly, that's why I think regardless of the size of the business, we should all use the trial and error model of, of entrepreneurial management. So you're testing, you, you then go from evolve, you go back to embrace, and that's exactly where you're testing new concepts. Because now, the, the findings that you uncovered when you originally did um, the, the excavation, if you will, they, they may no longer hold weight. Because let's face it, you're now at another level. So you're at this peak, this level, that's one peak, but there are many more peaks. There's always another peak. So you're now testing it, the concepts and saying, would this work? I also think when you go over to engagement, you should be testing. So it's sort of dual fold because your new type of inspired action, if it's not working, then it's no longer inspired. So you need to re you need to backtrack. You can't just say, this is my action plan and I'm going to follow it no matter what, because if you're following it, you will never evolve if it's not working because you're always answering to customer demand and customer demands are constantly evolving. I mean, there could be everything. There's so many unexpected circumstances. The political environment could change. Um, oil prices could increase. <clears throat> wars. I mean, these events do impact every single industry. 
It may take a while, but you never know. It could impact your industry. So you're constantly evaluating. I think that makes so much sense. And I, I wonder, and I know Janet is adamant about it, and I test, but I don't know that I have the right measures in place, mm -hmm. right? So if you don't have the baseline for what you're yeah. testing, right, you're like, hey, great, I did the test, but I don't know what the What happened? Is. Yeah. <laughs> So it's a, how do you, how do you kind of figure that part out? No, that's, I agree. So what you want to do is you want to have different metrics in place. So you may have analyzed a specific set of metrics and then the next time you want to analyze another, because again, I've, I've worked with $20 million budgets. I mean, I've had really big budgets and then I've worked, um, you know, I've had really small budgets. And the one thing is you never have enough money. I don't care how big your budget is. You always want more. So even when I've had really big budgets, I've then said, well, this is all I could afford to really test at this moment. This is where I'm prioritizing at this moment. Next time, in the next iteration, I'm going to test with these metrics. So you're continuing to, it's like a staircase. You're continuing to move up the steps. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's awesome. Janet, what, uh, what about you? What do you how do you, because you test and refine all day, right? That's kind of your world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have to look at it depends on the company and depends on who I'm working with, because um, the bigger brands, we have a harder time. You have to look at reach, you have to look at engagement, you have to look at those type of metrics, video views, that kind of thing. But there are companies, if you're working with e commerce, you can look at true conversion and sales. So there's there's different metrics and it all depends on what you're testing. You know, what is it exactly that you're testing? And then you know, what are the results? Like right now, for instance, I'm testing um, Instagram stories ads specifically oh. versus just throwing it on Facebook and that kind of, but we're doing a true email conversion campaign. So that's, that is what I'm looking at. How much are those emails costing me per lead? So you can narrow it down if you can. If you can't, then you have to kind of go to the higher level, which is the reach and engagement. But um, that's in social media speak, so could be totally different. Like for if you look at Google and website traffic, that's a whole different thing. So you know how many people are going to the website. Maybe that's your goal. So it kind of depends on your goals too. Do you ever find? Because one thing I find is is with all of my work in digital, is that some of the metrics aren't um, accurate if you will, and that people rely on, oh, well, I got traffic to my website. Well, did you convert? Oh, I converted. Well, how much was the sale? How much time did they spend on your landing page? How much time did they spend on the, you know, so it's, it's interesting to me that I think um, you need to also have very clearly defined uh, and sort of prepare your answers. What are, what am I looking to answer? What questions am I looking to answer? And then feed that into, then go work backwards to figure out what metrics you're looking at. Because what you're looking at may apply for, as you mentioned, one brand or one industry, yep. but it may not be applicable to another. So I also would caution everyone, don't um, attach too firmly to any one metric because that the, the answer may change. That metric may become really diluted in six months. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So if I'm hearing you correctly, it sounds like we have to start with the outcomes, right? What are we trying to yes. actually achieve? What, what's yes. the end goal, if you will, and then work backwards from that? Well, but, I, but I'm going to put a little twist on that because um, end goal for most companies, what is it? They're more it's sales. Fun. Yeah, money, yeah. it's sales, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I work with numerous clients where we cannot correlate that exactly to sales. So we, we go the next layer. So we go as close to the sales as we can possibly go, but sometimes you can't get to the deep analytics of the sales. Because I work with companies that you have to walk into a store to go buy the product. So how, how do we know who walked in the store from the social media? I actually have an answer for that, right? Yeah. We have a whole attribution model where we can, we can track the action of people, right? We can put a digital fingerprint on the CPU of their computer, excuse me, the, the G, uh, the, the GCU, the graphical card. Um, 
so we can follow them around the internet, right? Not only can we see where they went from the time they saw your ad, but we can track them backwards to what might have made them click on the ad. And so if you can line that up with a customer's actual yep. sales list, right? Yep. It's, yep. it's a pretty interesting, it's a pretty interesting, interesting solution. Yep. Yeah, we should maybe talk about that. I didn't know you lived in Portland, and now you know we have an attribution <laughs> tool. See how much learning is going on. Thank you, Juliet. You're helping us communicate. See, the communication whisperer, damn it. There you go. Well, I was going to say, that is the uh, You talked about, um, do we work, do we always work towards the end goal? Do we find, figure that out first? I would actually say no, and let me tell you why. So, we do work towards the end goal for metrics. We need to have that question answered. But before we even get to that, I would say that the smartest thing is to figure out what the problem is because most people are really clear on the symptoms and they are not clear on the actual problem. So problems and symptoms are very, very different. Mm -hmm. So if people say I'm losing sales, well, is that the problem or is that a symptom? Chances are it's a symptom. Why are you losing sales? Are you losing sales because you're in the wrong, um, from a demographic standpoint, you're in the wrong neighborhood and you're not attracting people. Or if you're online, is that not that particular area at the time that you promote your, your, um, your product or service, is it not done at the right time to attract your particular audience? So to me, I really think you need to clearly define the problem and figure out what the symptoms are before you even get to, okay, what is my end goal? And then the engagement comes in that piece. So although I'm saying it's, it's, it's a cycle and it's embrace, engage, um, evolve, you still need to figure out what, what does evolve look like for me? And then you fill in the color. So evolve may be, as you said, Janet, it's I want my bottom line to be improved. Well, that's really broad. Within the bottom line, what do you want to be improved? Because let's face it, at the end of the day, we all want to invest nothing and have tremendous sales. I mean, that's the reality, but I mean, that's not reality. So, so it's really figuring out, well, when I say I want more sales, what do I really mean by that? Do I want more sales in Detroit? Do I want more sales online? Do I want my online? I've done a lot of work with CPGs, with consumer packaged goods companies. Um, and so do I want my, um, my on online traffic to drive offline sales? So it's, it's all those, that's the, then, then you really get filled in with color. So that's sort of the black and white outline. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I, I, that makes a ton of sense to me. It does. Uh, I, I have to like kind of rethink my whole life now though. I'm a little disappointed. Are you, dis are you disappointed because we're not married in real life? I don't know. This, this could be it, right? I'm like, God, man, how much straighter would my shit be right now if my name were really Terry Herman? Although I do, would that even work? Because no, yeah, I would. Well, I, you know, I've I'm really progressive. Done, yeah, I would, I've seen it done. Super progressive. I I would be. Yeah, and listen, my last name's Bean. Who wants that? Oh, I love that, Mister. Now, I years ago I worked for Universal, and uh, Mister. Bean was my artist. So no. Oh I love, really? Yeah, I do. I do hope you people don't ask you how to spell Bean. I mean, that's easy enough to spell. Easy. You don't have to spell it out or anything. I, Janet, I, you and I have really simple names. However, with that said, no one ever spells my name right. And I never understood that. I said it's the most simplistic name. <laughs> well, when people ask me, I go, you must not be from Minnesota because John's <laughs> <really common." laughs> Yeah. As far as the phone book goes, you might be only outtaken by like an Anderson or a Smith. Anderson, yeah. 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 Smith. Smith and Jones, aren't those the most common names? Johnson's uh, probably one of Johnson's them. Johnson's got to be up there, yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in, but in Minnesota in particular, where yeah. it's Scandinavia Bazaar, oh, okay. um, it's, yeah, you're, you're somebody's son for sure. <laughs> somebody's son. <laughs> Whether well, it's know, Anders or Johns. I don't know what my original last name is because my grandfather was from Russia. So it was changed at Ellis Island. So I don't, mm. Herman is obviously not a Russian name. So I don't really know, but I kind of like the mystery. So maybe, but I know Herman's from Germany. So maybe I'm a man from Germany. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> That's great. I'm not, well, I'm not going to tell you this story. I have a question for you. Sure, fire away. Uh, so tell us what I'd like the audience to learn a little more about is how you serve your clients and who you work with. What do you exactly do? Break that down a little bit. Um, 
let them know for sure where they can find you and that kind of thing. Sure. Um, so the way I, I help my clients is depending on the, the length or the depth of what they'd like me to do with them. It would either be a deep dive into one client um, for a period of time. I mean, I've had clients where it's been two years. Um, it just depends the depth of what I'm doing. And essentially, you, you really do become part of the family. You become a full-time employee at that point, um, essentially, from a contract standpoint. Um, and then there are others where I'm just doing a project for them or a piece. And as you mentioned, Terry, communication whisperer. So maybe it's some sort of messaging campaign. It's marketing. So my background is, is um, I'm a business strategist, uh, communications everything within that marketing, branding, um, analysis, research, uh, and client relations. So it depends on what I'm doing um, because my other specialty is connecting people, so partnerships. Um, so another thing I've done is taking businesses that want to earn a living in this day and age, but do it in a purpose-filled way because that really is trendy and I'm hoping that's beyond trendy. I'm hoping that's really here to stay because that's how I support companies personally. Um, so what that means is tying the company in with a cause um, that is aligned with their brand essence. So the greatest example I always use, I didn't do this, but this is my favorite example of a company that I really think gets it. Um, Caterpillar, great company. They are the one of the largest infrastructure builders in the world, heavy duty equipment manufacturer. And they, we, um, they were tied in with Charity Water which is a nonprofit whose sole purpose is providing access to clean um, water for people in underdeveloped countries. And they worked together. Um, Caterpillar went to several countries in Africa and built wells. Um, and then Charity Water was able to work with the communities um, and provide the access to them. And that changed hundreds of thousands of lives. And to me, that company earned the right to earn a living. That, that's just my personal philosophy. So sure. I love working with companies that get that, that understand. So their brand essence was infrastructure. And here's how they used it for good in the world and they gave back to the community. So that's what I like to do. I really love working with clients to form those partnerships, to find the right businesses, to define what their brand essence is. And, and then using the three E's, figure out how we can get there but part of that, uh, certainly a big part of it is working with the Charity Waters and the other nonprofits of the world. So that's another thing I really do um, with my clients. Love that. Mm. Definitely, awesome. So where can people find you? Where's the best place? I know LinkedIn's probably one of them, but. Yes. <laughs> yes, LinkedIn is one of them. I'm actually in the process of building a website, which hopefully um, should be built soon. Um, I'm going to have two different kinds of websites. So that will be LinkedIn. I'm going to have all the contact information um, on there. Um, I'm in the process of doing a podcast. I won't compete with you. It's going to be different. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of podcasts. Totally fine. Yep. Yeah. And then um, I'm writing a book as well. But the main place to find me is certainly LinkedIn. Um, I like to do daily content. Um, but video is my strong suit because I, I just think it's a really – fun way of communicating a message. And if you are really astute, you can look in someone's eyes and see if they're telling you the truth. And I know I am very authentic. So <laughs> I know some people just like to get followers. Truthfully, that is not my goal. My goal is to get my message out there and um, to attract clients that, that under, with whom my message resonates um, and then to work together. That's really what it is. So it's definitely LinkedIn is, is a big part of it. But it, it only come to me if you want, the re if you want someone real and you want someone who's going to be candid because I'm very candid. Um, so, you know, then we can absolutely work together. But if you just want me to repeat what you're, you've been doing, I'm not that person. I'm the person who's going to come in and help you and change things up and, and help you go to the next level. But if you want to stay where you are, that's not me. <laughs> that's good. Good. I'm glad you're upfront about that. That's yes. awesome. So, Juliet, J U L I E T, Herman. H E R M A N. Yeah, so that makes it easier for you to be found, right? Thank you. Um, I like that. I like it quite a bit. I like the energy. I like what you brought. I like the three E's. Um, I think my favorite is Evolve, right? Yes. I see way too many people doing the same thing um and not even doing it differently right and so and i think sometimes i fall into that trap too and that freaks me out a little bit i was having some of that head trash this morning so it's good to get that 
little wake up slap every now and again. So I appreciate that. And what do you think, Miss Portland? Miss Portland. <laughs> I just know. Where's your story? You have the Vikings hat on too, by the way. I just yeah. got that. Yeah, like, black on black. Ah, uh, that's awesome. No, I think this was fantastic, and it's always good to. I think complacency could can make a business die. Yes. And so I do believe that what you talked about and just keeping that keeping a circle, but you've got to test and make changes accordingly. So I think uh, every point you made was fantastic. So thank you so much for being on our show. Can I add one point real quick? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Carrie, I love what you just said about head trash. That's such a wonderful way to articulate that. We all have that. It's part of being a human being. And so to me, the goal is always to get out of your own way. And whether, you know, businesses are comprised of individuals. We are all human. We are all people. And so to think that, that you are going to succeed alone is really being in your head. It's get that head trash is just feeding you and making that head really big. So get out of your head, get out of your own way and look at what's around you because you are comprised of customers. And I always say, if you are in a cave and you shout, who's going to hear you? So that's when you're stuck in your head. So get outside and, and, real, and embrace your customers and acknowledge that they are part of your success. Because without them, you will be nowhere. And figure out who those other wonderful people are um, that may have different skill sets and they don't have to agree with you. Oh, also, that's the other point. Heterogeneity is the way to go, not homogeneity. Everyone wants to surround themselves with yes people. If you want to be yes, you're going to plateau. If you want to surround yourself with people who are going to push you, and I don't mean combative, who give you constructive feedback, who are, who have, or innovators and intelligent ideas, that's another E, who are really live their lives by being an entrepreneur. It doesn't mean they're in an entrepreneurial business, that that's how they live their lives. That to me is, is really a successful business model. Love it. I, I think you just named it. I think we're going to call this get out of your head. Absolutely. It's going to be the title of this show, and I'm super excited to have it come out when it does. Um, love it. I, you and I need to connect offline, and I'm looking Absolutely. forward to that. Um, awesome. Janet, where can they find us? Businessgirltime.com and businessgirltime.xyz is our Facebook group. So just head, head there and join our group, too. We'd love to see you there. All Thank right. you. Have a good one. Wonderful. Bye.